Hey, welcome back. So for this video, we are going to do the first exercise in advanced part design. This will be our event that we are creating. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new document and making a few changes. In this situation, I have my document here. Let's go ahead and delete our assembly. And let's rename our part studio one to say event. We're also going to go ahead and create a sketch on the top view. So let's go ahead and get that done and reposition ourselves. So for step two, we are creating a circle centered at the origin. So before we continue, let's make sure we change our workspace units to millimeters. Now let's go back to our sketch. Let's go ahead and dimension this with a size of 200 millimeters. So we're also going to extrude this at this point. So I'm going to reposition myself and we want this to have a value of 10. And let's accept that. While we're at it, let's change part one to read vent. For step three, we are selecting our variable feature and we will be creating a variable called diameter and it'll have a value of 15. So we can find this here. So make sure you click variable. Let's call it BIM diameter, and we'll give it a value of 15. And this is good to go. Step four, we are going to create a circle and we're going to give it a dimension that is equal to our variable. This new circle will be on the top face of our circle that we just extruded. Let's click sketch, reorient ourselves. Start it off right at the origin. Let's get that measured. Start typing in DIAM and just hit enter. And there it is. We automatically get a value of 15. Step five, we're just extruding our new circle. So let's go ahead and click extrude. Click on the circle or sketch number two. In this case, we want to remove and it'll be through all. So notice I just changed this to through all and let's accept that. So notice we just pierced through this entire circle. For step six, we are adding another variable. So in this case, we are going to call it diam again. And let's start typing in D I A and let's hit enter there and let's just put plus 30. I'm missing MM, so let's make sure we include that. That way our units that we're using are similar to the previous diameter, which had a value of 15. So now this is diam plus 30. So now we have a value of 45. And let's hit accept. For step seven, we're adding two more variables. So let's go ahead and call this slots. And this will be a number. And that's good right there. So slots is equal to zero. And now we're going to add another value or another variable. Let's go ahead and call this slots, and this will be our previous slot measurement plus four, and let's hit number right here. Let's check that slots plus four. All right. Just a reminder, this was a number. Now for step eight, we're adding another variable. This will be slot width is equal to five millimeters. Except, and that looks good. So for step nine, we're going to add these two lines right here. One is going to be vertical and the other one is not horizontal, it's slightly angled. And then we're also adding this arc right here. Notice that this point right here is, the point of this arc is horizontal to the point of this line. So we'll do that as we click on the top face, we click sketch. Let's go ahead and add our lines. All right, we're going to make these equal to each other. Now let's add our arc. Notice I'm gonna move my cursor there to make the first point horizontal. Now 
the other point will be there and I'll just leave this right there. We'll fix that. So at this point, we do want to add an angle between the two lines. So let's go ahead and add user dimension tool. Notice that we're using a function for this one. It's saying 360 divided by number of slots. So 360 divided by the number of slots. I also have a value of degrees. So our answer is 90 because notice the number of slots is four and the circle has a degree of 360. So 360 divided by 90, or 360 divided by four is 90 degrees. So now we're going to adjust the arc a little bit. So what we're going to do right now is get rid of our origin. So what we want to do is make this point of our arc coincidental with the location where the two lines meet. So that is good right there. So by the way, these are the constraints that we should be seeing, that our arc is coincidental, this line is vertical, and that the two lines are equal to each other, and that these two points highlighted in orange are horizontal. For step 10, we're adjusting the radius of our arc. Notice we'll be using this function right here. So let's go ahead and write that out. So this will be diameter. by two plus slot width divided by two. We get a value of 25. This is what we want. So for step 11, we're using our select slot to actually create this slot feature around the arc. So let's go ahead and get that from here. So we're clicking offset, oh my bad, we're clicking slot. And I click on this arc. And I wanna adjust this dimension right here. So we're going to put slot width. So for step 12, we're just adding two dimensions. So notice right here, we will be getting rid of the constraints for now. So I'm going to click on this dot here and then on this line, and I'm putting slot width as the value. I'll do the same here. And that'll be slot width. and it automatically changes to five. So let's just get rid of, let's move that closer and we are cleaning up this image, so good. So let's go ahead and click accept. So for step 13, we're going to extrude this drawing that we just did right here. So this arc that we offset, let's go ahead and do that. So let's click extrude. We're selecting sketch number three. We are removing and we're doing a through all. So there it is, and we accept. Step 14, we're using the fillet feature to add some smoothness or curves to this corner here and then this corner there. So just to make sure this is circular, and yep, so that looks good. And our value is going to be one millimeter, which is what we have selected. So let's keep moving forward. For step 15, we're going to use a circular pattern feature to make a copy of this indentation that we created right here. So let's go ahead and click on circular pattern. We're going to change this to feature pattern. And let's go in and select our fillet or fillet and our extrude. So in this situation, we're angling it 360 degrees and we are the instance count is equal to our number of slots. The axis of pattern will be the edge of the circle. We're applying per instance. So for step 16, we are going to be selecting quite a bit right now to actually um, do uh, quite a bit of repetitions. So let's go ahead and use our circular pattern tool again. And we will be going to feature pattern. 
our axis of pattern will be this piece right here. So let's go ahead and select our features. So notice everything we have to select is listed here. So it's quite a bit. So diameter was 45, slots number equal to four, our sketch number three, which is here, our extrude three, our fillet, and of course our circular pattern. So we also want to do the instance count of five. So we're going to create five lines of this geometry and we're doing this applying it per instance and our angle is going to be zero. So at this point we are finished with our device. So what you need to do now is click on the face of your vent and then check the mass properties to see the surface area for the following question. Anyways, thanks for watching and check out the next few videos.